Hello and welcome back to the Pause Purpose Play podcast with me, your host, Michaela Thomas, clinical psychologist and expert on all things connection, compassion, perfectionism and ADHD. This is the podcast for you who find it hard to blow your own trumpet. And no, there is no innuendo there. Those of you who find it really hard to speak up, Those of you who find it really hard to use your voice and ask for what your needs are and for them to be met. So I know from my experience of working with ambitious, high-striving women for literally nearly two decades now, that is really, really tricky to voice your needs. We live in a patriarchal society that makes it really difficult for us to Firstly, tune into our needs that we even feel them in the first place, and then secondly, voice them to someone else. And thirdly, use our boundaries so that these needs actually don't go trampled all over by other people, but instead that other people have a chance to meet them. In my work as a clinical psychologist, specializing in various different therapies, including compassion focused therapy, I often work with three flows of compassion. The first one is the flow of compassion from you to others. You know, you being kind and caring and giving towards your kids, your friends, your family, your co-workers, your clients, all the things that you care about. The second flow is the compassion from others flowing into you. And that's you being able to receive offers of help and support, kindness and accepting that. And the third flow is self-compassion, the ability to care and look after yourself because you do give a damn about yourself, right? And these three flows of compassion can be blocked and disturbed and kind of interfered with by various different things. Our life experiences, our household norms and rules, the way we were raised, Anything you've been through, the relationships you've been in, your intimate relationships, your friendships, all the lessons you've learned through life can give rise to fears, blocks and resistances around these flows of compassion. It's that common that researchers like Paul Gilbert put together a measurement around this, a scale to look at the fears of compassion. So it's actually called that fears of compassion scale. Have a Google if you wish. And that means that when we look into what people fear around being compassionate to others, about receiving compassion from others, or being compassionate to ourselves, we often see, or I often see, I should say, in my community of high striving women who are prone to burnout, I would say I often see them being blocked, not just in the self-compassion flow, where we'd assume that they would be blocked. Of course, it'd be hard to look after ourselves. We don't feel like we're worth it or deserve it or have the time for it or it's a bit icky it's a bit lazy I don't want to take a break because I don't have time for that and we're also often seeing people being blocked in the second flow of compassion this idea of receiving compassion and kindness flowing in from others so I want to talk about that today how hard it is to receive that kindness and help and how hard it is to ask for it you have other episodes I've done here in the past about this flow of compassion you have an episode called don't ask don't get and i'm going to do a little bit of that today i'm going to do don't ask don't get vibes because that's what i've done recently when i have asked for people to vote for me in the inspirational modern women awards by the time you hear this the event is probably even over i might even know with the soul crushing disappointment that i didn't win and have to sit there and face my rejection sensitivity dysphoria of you know the very real pain of being rejected or I've had to deal with the anxiety of giving an acceptance speech for something that I think is cringeworthy either way it's a win either way me going up to receive an award or you know be passed over for an award is a win because it meant that I've put myself forward I've done something courageous I've been visible And lots of the women I support don't dare to do this. They don't dare to ask, so they don't get. And I wanted to share with you today what happened when I 
openly in a Facebook forum with about five and a half thousand UK psychologists in private practice, mentioned this award, asked people to vote for me, and unmasked my ADHD. Well, if you are going to unmask, why not do it with a bang, right? And the reason I did this, the reason I posted in a forum, wasn't to just go, who look at me. And even if I did, what's wrong with that? We are so taught to not blow our own trumpet. Especially in Swedish culture, which is something called the Jantelå, which comes from Norway, actually. But it loosely translated means that you shouldn't think that you are something. So similar to, like, don't be too big for your boots. We have a very humble kind of uh, norm culture in Sweden. So even talking about these things now, putting these things on LinkedIn, asking for people to vote for me, for me putting it on Instagram, it brought up shame. And that shame, we might say stuff like, oh, it was cr- so cringy or like, oh, I felt like icky about doing it. Those are just modern day language around saying shame. It triggers our shame stories. So it triggers my cultural experience of being needing to be modest don't break those rules don't break the unwritten cultural norms of don't be too big for your boots but i am a fan of you know courage over confidence so i did it anyway because one of the things i really wanted to focus on last year in 2023 was being a beacon my word for the year was beacon my business manager or my operations manager or whatever I call her now, my bestie basically at work, Laura, she sent me a card with a lighthouse on to illustrate the beacon and I had it on my desk for the entire year. And what we set as an intention, what we focus on, what we endeavor to move towards, we're more likely to make efforts and actions in the line of. So that was around my value system, around being inspirational to others, about being a pioneer, about paving the way for other women. So my brain is buzzing quite a bit today. I have a lot of different strands in my head of what I want to talk to you about, but let's try to, <laughs> let's try to keep it brief. I might do a few more episodes around this topic, but today I want to read out some of the responses I got when I unmasked, when I was brave, when I found courage over confidence when I asked, so I actually received, how much I allowed myself that flow of compassion coming inwards to me, with your palms facing up. That's what we do in yoga, palms facing up as a way to let yourself receive. I also wanted to touch upon the International Women's Day this year, which was inspiring inclusion. That's why I plucked up the courage to post about my award nomination because I think it is inspiring inclusion to say that I'm going to attend this award wearing a rainbow colored dress when no doubt other people would be wearing their like night, like evening gowns and fancy, fancier clothes. I don't have any really fancy clothes and I wasn't going to hire one. Sorry, I <laughs> just like I value my money when I already have a lovely dress that I feel bright and colorful and joyous in and I've had lots of compliments for. I would say it qualifies as dopamine dressing. If you don't already know what dopamine dressing is, it's essentially when we dress in a colorful way or in a way that gives us a vibe of feeling more excited and alive. So getting more dopamine feels rewarding, stimulating, right? So I'll be dopamine dressing in the the name of neurodiversity. The event goes on on the 22nd of March and when you hear this, it's probably already passed. I don't even know when this episode will come out. However, when you hear this, I would hopefully have found a way to use courage or confidence to speak in this way that I did in a post where I unmasked my ADHD in a psychologist forum, knowing that one of my biggest stories that has been showing up for me whenever I do new stretchy things whenever I do things that I know in my soul is going to be helpful for you out there, like starting a podcast, like building a group coaching program, like announcing that I'm nominated for an award, like writing a book, any of the things I have done that has actually been seen as quote-unquote successful 
anything I have done has triggered my old stories around needing to be humble, needing to not be too big for your boots, and not drawing that kind of attention to you because what would the other psychologists say? It's a huge block for me and it shows up whenever I come into a group coaching format or whenever I get some business coaching. Me being really worried about the judgment from other psychologists is a huge block. Maybe I need to talk separately about that as well because I know there's quite a few psychologists who also listen to my podcast. So if you're listening right now, I see you. I know you worry about this too. And in fact, the psychologist community can be really critical and judgmental because we are so tightly bound by our ethical code of conduct and around our practices to make sure that we do no harm to the public that we serve. This is important. It really matters that we do no harm to those we serve. However, if it can become such a rule-governed thing that we hold ourselves back from really going into that community and serving the public in the best way. And instead, other people with lesser experience, lesser training, who haven't been to university for a million years and got like doctoral training, other people who have maybe less qualification to be able to serve those with mental health difficulties, they are in that arena and we are not because we are scared of what the other psychologists will say about us getting into the arena. So if you are a psychologist listening, here's a shout out to you. You can do brave things. You can unmask if you fancy that. You can put yourself out there. You can run for awards. If you're not a psychologist and you're listening to this and you are a woman who's actually not daring to ask for things, you're struggling to receive. You don't know how to get that support from others, the, the ones I'm about to read out to you. If you don't know how to elicit that, then that's exactly what we do in Bam Right. When you're listening to this, I may have just finished my challenge around the spacious year. I really hope you signed up to it. If you didn't, if you didn't get there in time, do still jump over to thethomasconnection.co.uk forward slash spacious year. And I can send you some of the replays and you can also drop me a message if there's anything particular you want to hear from inside that group. It is a community that I'm trying to build. It is the connection with you out there that I'm really wanting to have. And that's why I share these vulnerable things. Yes, I had massive vulnerability hangover after I unmasked and posted in that Facebook group for other psychologists. And I could do a whole episode just on vulnerability hangover. Maybe I should. I could also do a whole episode on the ability to receive with, with arms wide open. Maybe I should. Or could, I should say, because we're trying to soften those shoulds into coulds, aren't we? But anyway, I'm rambling on. Let's read out just to reveal so many things that happened. In case you're sitting here on tenterhooks wondering, when's she going to get to the point? Well, I have ADHD. Deal with it. And... I guess the point is that we often aren't accurate in our predictions of what's going to happen. Our fear, our anxiety isn't the best predictor. It isn't the best judge. It isn't the best fact in telling us what's going to happen. We do not have a crystal ball. When we are anxious and understandably we will be, where we're doing something new and scary and risky, something vulnerable that might feel like we could face judgment, criticism, rejection, or even abandonment, of course you're going to feel anxious if you're doing something vulnerable. But our brain is usually not very good at guesstimating how other people will respond. We probably will get far fewer negative things than we predict. And if we did get something negative, we actually tend to underestimate how well we'd be able to cope with that. And how many other people, how many external resources there are to give you support. So if you did have that one troll or that one Karen on Facebook who was being horrible, you will probably have 20, 30 of your friends or acquaintances or random people on the internet or listeners to your podcast who would say, I'm with you, I stand with you, I celebrate you. And you'll be able to handle it, you'll be able to get over it. Even with rejection, sensitivity, dysphoria, it would still heal and it would still pass. 
So remember that. We're not very good at predicting how badly something's going to go. Most of the things we've worried about never happened, like Mark Twain supposedly said in a quote. So the things I was worried about, about putting this post out in the psychologist forum, they didn't happen. Nobody sent me a message saying I should be struck off. Nobody, as far as I know, has reported me to the HCPC, which is our governing body that holds my professional registration. Nobody has written anything mean. And in fact, I've been bowled over with the amount of positive feedback. And I'm going to read out some of them to you. Not because I want to toot my own horn. And again, coming back to that again, well, so what then? What's wrong with blowing your own trumpet? In fact, you'll hear a comment in a minute about that. But I want you to really listen to this and listen carefully and notice how would you feel if someone was reading this stuff out about you? If you were receiving comments like this, if you were receiving compliments, how would you feel about these things? Would you feel triggered? Would you be able to notice any stories showing up? Would you notice batting off compliments? Pretty sure I've done an episode about compliments in the past too. If I haven't, maybe I could. Anyway, in no particular order, these are some of the messages from the well over 350 likes I got inside this Facebook group. Now, I've talked about the external validation of the like before, back in the day, a long time ago. And I still stand by that. We don't need likes on posts. But this was an experiment. This was me predicting that something dreadful might happen and doing it anyway as a way to test this in a vulnerability experiment. So in that case, the likes do matter a bit because they're a reassurance that actually I was wrong. My anxious predictions weren't accurate. It didn't go as badly as I thought. And whatever people were thinking about me that they weren't posting, that's actually none of my business. If anyone holds judgment about me, and doesn't share it to my face and doesn't post it anywhere and doesn't, you know, do blatant defamation. It's actually none of my business. People are entitled to hold a dislike about me. People are entitled to have a difference of opinion about whether we unmask in public as a psychologist. Absolutely. And isn't that nice and lucky that we we can all be different in what we think and value and what opinions we hold? It would be so boring otherwise. So I have to remind myself of that when my mind gremlins say, yeah, but those were just the people who, who actually commented. They were positive. Well, what about all those people who didn't comment who actually now hate you? Again, <laughs> that's none of my business and I have to tolerate that. If I want to be a truly inspirational modern woman and a beacon and lead the way in, in psychology the way I'm trying to do, I have to tolerate some of this stuff. Some of this stuff internally and some of this stuff externally. And luckily, I haven't had any hatred at all. So here we go. In no particular order. This is incredible. Well done. Coming into the profession decades ago, I wish there had been visibility of neurodivergence within it. What a role model you are. Thank you. What a role model you are. How would you feel if someone said that to you? Thank you so much for sharing. This is a helpful reminder that imposter syndrome and perfectionism is really independent of actual objective success and achievement. Congratulations. Because yes, I have an award-winning podcast. It's a top 2% podcast. I am now up for an award myself. I had a book that was a top 3 bestseller in the category of Viagra. Dance, don't tell anyone. It has nothing to do with my book, but still counts. So... God, that sort of spun myself off a bit. That just goes to show that we can have all these objective successes and still have the not enoughness story be triggered. So I'm calling it out, I'm noticing, and I'm taking the action that goes in the line with my values of wanting to be inspirational to others. Next post, next comment. I love this post, beautifully written, really modeling appreciation and valuing yourself. Have a fabulous awards evening. So that's it again, right? I really want to model to you that I walk the walk and don't just talk the talk. Hence why I do these vulnerability things. Next comment. 
Wow, voted. Very inspiring and all power to you for challenging your own thoughts and putting yourself out there. Gives us all permission to think big. Got everything crossed for a win. Love the dress too. So yeah, that is that permission piece. Someone has to go first, right? To be a pioneer. And that's not always comfortable, as the previous guest Harriet Starling said on an episode about essentially being an icon, breaking the mould. That's hard. Another comment was, congratulations, Michaela, this post has brought a huge smile to my face. You so deserve this. I find you immensely inspiring. I voted for you and be keeping my fingers crossed. And a rainbow. Here's the deserving piece, right? Yes, I do deserve this. And anything that comes into your life, you deserve too. Anything good that happens to you, it is not just sheer luck. It is deserving. It is worthy. You are worthy of this. Next comment. Great post. Congratulations and good luck. And fab dress too. What a great ambassador you are for clinical psychology. An ambassador. Hmm. Thank you. Next comment. Well done. This is amazing. Enjoy your success as you certainly earned it and worthy of the award. Yes, because I am worthy and so are you. And the last comment. Of the ones I've selected, that is. Congratulations, you have my vote. Well done on the nominations. You really deserve it and you inspire others. Enjoy the night in your fab dress. And I will. When I speak to you next time, I'll give you the lowdown on what actually happened on the awards ceremony, if I won, and how I, if I didn't win, graciously accepted my defeat and then went home and cried about it afterwards. And as always... I am here to be that beacon for you, to be inspirational. If you want to be able to be like I am, you can't be me because I'm already taken and sometimes I am really annoying. But you can learn how to be you unapologetically in the way that you want to be. To go for the things that feel successful to you, to feel like you can follow that ambition but without drowning in it. That's why I built Burn Bright. That's the whole reason why I built my group coaching program, Burn Bright. And it is absolutely life-changing. We open the doors again in April or end of March to end of April for a month. And then it will be closed again for six months because I only accept one round at a time at the moment because I really want to be able to be the cheerleader for these women. The slots are open soon. But they go first to the women who are currently doing Burn Bright in case anyone wants to do another round. And why would you repeat it? Why would you do it again? It's because whenever we are working on something, it takes practice to make progress. So sometimes we need a few rounds. It's almost like rinse and repeat. Here's another level that I hadn't explored yet. Here's another layer I can put on top of the previous layer. So we end up being like a self-worth layer cake at the end of it. Feeling like we deserve every achievement we have made without looking to the next thing immediately and actually feeling the joys and the fruits of our labor, feeling proud of what we've done. Like, I am goddamn proud of this nomination because it meant that those women who nominated me, my Burn Bright ladies, to them, I'm truly inspirational. And that's that's all that's that's all I'm doing this for to be able to hold the hand of others to guide them and now I'm asking for your support too so too late to vote that ship has already sailed my friend but if you want to know more about the next round of burn bright you can book a call with me to discuss through whether burn bright would be a good option for you you can go to the link in the show notes it is burn hyphen bright dot you can book me. Until I speak to you next time, do take care of yourself.